Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at an efficient synthesis of tetrodotoxin. This work was carried out by the Matsura and Trauner groups at New York University and was uploaded to Chem Archive in 2021. Tetrodotoxin is a molecule which is found in a variety of aquatic animals and is most commonly associated with the pufferfish, or fugu, which is a delicacy in Japanese cuisine and requires great skill to prepare the fish, as serving the organs which contain this compound can cause fatal poisoning, of which there is no known cure. This toxin isn't produced by the fish itself, but instead by symbiotic bacteria which live within the fish, and it is possible to breed these fish in isolated conditions to prevent any traces of tetrodotoxin from being present. This molecule has a long history in organic chemistry since its structure was first deduced in 1964 by Woodward in an elegant piece of work which required many tons of pufferfish to isolate enough tetrodotoxin to deduce its structure. I highly recommend reading this paper as it really shows how far the field has come since those early days and the lengths that chemists had to go to to figure out these structures without the modern techniques available to scientists today. The first synthesis was published by Kishi in 1972 who managed to synthesize racemic tetrodotoxin. It wasn't until 2003 that the first asymmetric synthesis was published by Isolbe, followed a few weeks later by another asymmetric synthesis by the Dubois group. To date, there have been seven syntheses of this molecule, which I'll include in the description below. Tetrodotoxin acts as a selective blocker of voltage-gated sodium channels and is widely used in research to study the function of these channels. It is by binding to these channels that tetrodotoxin is able to act as a poison, as this inhibits the transmission of signals between the brain and the body, resulting in muscle paralysis, including those of the diaphragm and intercostal muscles, which ultimately stops the victim from breathing. It is an incredibly potent poison, with an LD50 of just 334 micrograms per kilogram, a poison much more toxic than cyanide. Tetrodotoxin has attracted much attention from the organic chemistry community due to its unique and challenging structure. It is a highly functionalized tetracyclic molecule with only one carbon atom that isn't bonded to a heteroatom. It features a unique dioxoadamantane orthoacid, which exists as an anion, with the proton instead residing on the basic guanidine fragment. This guanidine forms one half of a six-membered ring, with one of the nitrogen groups forming a hemiaminal with a secondary hydroxyl group. Overall, this molecule has nine contiguous stereocenters, all of which must be correctly installed to complete the asymmetric synthesis. So let's look at the retrosynthetic strategy that these researchers took. They envisaged that the tetracyclic structure could be installed using an oxidation and guanylation strategy. This late-stage oxidation would be used to create the orthoester through a reaction with an alkyne group. This alkyne would be installed by the addition to an isoxazolene ring, which in turn could be constructed by a cascade involving a Henry reaction, dehydration and a cycloaddition. This intermediate, bearing a terminal alkene and aldehyde, would be generated through a fragmentation. And ultimately, the precursor to this could be produced from a simple glucose derivative. So let's look at how the researchers carried out the synthesis. The researchers started with a previously reported glucose derivative bearing an exoalkene at the 3 position and a 6-membered benzyl acetal between the C6 and C4 positions. This was reduced using dibal H, which first coordinates to the C6 oxygen, which promotes the fragmentation of the acetal and the formation of an oxonium intermediate. This serves as an electrophile for the hydride which forms a benzyl ether on the C4 position in a 95% yield. The selectivity of this reaction is driven by steric hindrance, as a bulky aluminium reagent cannot effectively coordinate to the C4 position due to the repulsion of the alkene at the 3 position. This alkene took part in the next reaction, which was a Sharpless dihydroxylation. This reaction uses osmium tetroxide, which undergoes a cycloaddition with the alkene which is hydrolyzed upon workup to form the diol in a 98% yield. This reaction uses potassium ferrocyanide as a sacrificial oxidant, 
which regenerates the osmium tetroxide, allowing it to be used in a catalytic amount, as it is quite a toxic reagent. This reaction was stereoselective, as the steric hindrance from the C2 and C4 benzyl ethers blocked one face of the molecule, only allowing the osmium tetroxide to add from one side. This newly generated diol was then protected as an acetonide group. Reaction of dimethoxypropane with PTSA promotes the leaving of methanol, forming an oxonium intermediate, which is first attacked by the primary hydroxyl group. Once again, a molecule of methanol is eliminated after protonation with PTSA, and the oxonium intermediate is attacked by the tertiary hydroxyl group, forming the cyclic acetonide in a 98% yield. As this acetal is cyclic, it is much more stable than the possible acyclic acetals, which could also be formed. This explains the selectivity of reaction with the diol rather than the reaction with the primary hydroxyl group at the C6 position. With the 1,2 diol now protected, the C6 hydroxyl group was then reacted in an appel reaction. Triphenylphosphine is reacted with iodine, forming a phosphonium iodide, which is attacked by the hydroxyl group. This phosphonium intermediate acts as an electrophile, where it is attacked by the iodide, eliminating triphenylphosphine oxide and forming the primary C6 iodide in a 91% yield over two steps from the triol. The C6 iodide allows for a burnet vasella fragmentation to occur. Lithium halide exchange with Bewley generates an organolithium species at the 6th position. This electron-rich moiety promotes the fragmentation of the anomeric acetal, forming an aldehyde at the C1 position with the elimination of lithium methoxide to form an alkene between the C5 and C6 carbons. This aldehyde then took part in a Henry reaction with nitromethane, which was deprotonated by Bewley in the same pot, forming an electrophile which added to the aldehyde. The alka oxide intermediate was trapped with methyl chloride, forming a good leaving group, which allows for the deprotonation of the alpha proton with triethylamine, triggering an elimination reaction to form a nitroalkene in a 79% yield. The authors were able to grow crystals of this product and confirm its structure by X-ray crystallography. The next reaction was a Michael addition to this nitroalkene. We can redraw this structure in a chair-like conformation to make the stereochemistry of this reaction easier to see. The reaction of para-anisyl alcohol with Bewley generates an alkoxide, which acts as a nucleophile and undergoes Michael addition to the nitroalkene. This formed only a single isomer, and we can explain this by looking at the conformation of the electrophile. If you are unfamiliar with conformational analysis, I have done an in-depth video explaining this topic, which I'll link in the description down below. The reacting conformation is driven by the minimization of allylic repulsion. This places the hydrogen atom of the alkene and the hydrogen atom of the tertiary carbon group bearing the benzyl ether in the same plane, as it is the smallest group and generates the least repulsion. The ideal angle of approach for a nucleophile is the Berge Dunnett's angle of 107 degrees, which arises from the orientation of the pi antibonding orbital. The nucleophile approaches from the face of the molecule bearing the benzyl ether, as this is a smaller group than that of the adjacent quaternary carbon, which bears the acetonide group and the rest of the molecule. The addition of this nucleophile generates a nitronate intermediate, which was trapped with Bock anhydride, which is able to abstract a proton and carry out a dehydration reaction, forming a nitrile oxide, a reaction which is driven forward by the loss of carbon dioxide gas. In this chair-like conformation, the nitrile oxide is perfectly positioned to undergo a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition with the terminal alkene to generate the target isoxazoline ring in an 86% yield as a single isomer. In the next reaction, the PMB group was selectively deprotected in the presence of the benzyl ethers using cerium ammonium nitrate. This selectivity arises from the increased reactivity of the PMB group granted by the paramethoxy substituent. This compound was then alkynylated using lithium TMS acetylide. The isoxazoline is first activated using boron trifluoride, which increases its electrophilicity. This allows the lithium species to add, forming the alkynylated product in a 70% yield. The TMS group was lost during the workup and is now present in the final product. The free hydroxyl group was found to be essential for this reaction, 
as it is deprotonated during the reaction and serves as a directing group by coordinating to the lithium and guiding the alkyne to one face of the ring, ensuring that only one isomer was generated from this reaction. It was at this stage of the synthesis that the authors needed to rearrange the protecting groups of the molecule to prepare for the final reduction and oxidation reactions. The free hydroxyl group and the nitrogen were both protected as Bach groups using Bach anhydride and DMAP. The benzyl groups were then deprotected using a chromoselective photochemical debenzylation, which uses very mild conditions of DDQ under irradiation with UV light at 525 nanometers. The O Bach group was then selectively deprotected in preference to the N Bach group using potassium carbonate in methanol. The newly revealed cis 1 2 diol was then protected as an acetonide group using PTSA and dimethoxypropane, as we saw earlier in this synthesis. With these protecting groups now in place, the isoxazolidine group underwent a reductive ring opening with samarium diiodide. This reagent is a one electron reducing agent which breaks the weak NO bond, leaving a radical residing on the nitrogen atom. This is further reduced by another equivalent of samarium diiodide to generate the anion, which is protonated upon workup. The newly revealed alcohol was then protected with a bulky TBS group, which is selective for the primary hydroxyl group as it is less sterically hindered and more nucleophilic than the secondary hydroxyl group. Overall, these reduction and protection reactions form the product in a 91% yield over two steps. We will once again redraw the molecule in the chair conformation to make it easier to explain the following reactions. The next step involved a hydroxylactonization, which oxidizes the alkyne, forming a new intramolecular carbon oxygen bond, while also installing a carbonyl group and an alpha hydroxy group, forming the target product in a 71% yield. So let's look at this reaction sequence in detail. The first part is a cycloisomerization, catalyzed by a cyclopentadienyl ruthenium catalyst. This first coordinates to the alkyne, promoting its isomerization, which involves the migration of a hydrogen atom and the formation of a ruthenium vanillidine complex. This is highly electrophilic and undergoes intramolecular attack from the axial hydroxyl group. The exchange of a triphenylphosphine ligand with N-hydroxysuccinamide increases the electron density on the ruthenium complex, allowing it to be eliminated to regenerate the catalyst and produce the target enol ether. While this enol ether could be isolated, the authors instead proceeded to a ketohydroxylation reaction in the same pot. The addition of oxone to this reaction oxidizes the ruthenium catalyst to ruthenium tetroxide. This undergoes a cycloaddition with the enol ether, which importantly occurs from only one phase as the other is blocked by the bulky acetonide protecting groups. The ruthenium oxide species can then abstract a proton, oxidizing one of the oxygen groups to a carbonyl to form the target lactone, leaving the compound bound to ruthenium in a monodentate fashion. This can be eliminated to generate the target alpha hydroxy lactone, producing a ruthenium dioxide, which is reoxidized by oxone and can continue the catalytic cycle again. It is important to note that this reaction was incredibly sensitive to overoxidation to instead form a dicarbonyl species, and the reaction time had to be carefully controlled to be precisely five minutes to maximize the conversion of the substrate without overoxidizing it to the alpha keto species. With the hydroxylactone now formed, the authors once again had to rearrange the protecting groups. First, they deprotected the N Bach group using TMS triflate and 2 6 lutidine, and then deprotected the TBS group using TBAF. The deprotected product was formed in a 91% yield over two steps. They then protected the hydroxyl groups using TMS chloride, leaving the nitrogen free to react. This nitrogen then took part in a guanylation reaction. The guanylation was accomplished using 1,3-dibach thiomethyl isothiourea. This was activated using mercury dichloride, which is a thiophilic metal salt, meaning that it has a high affinity for sulfur. The TMS protection and guanylation were carried out in one pot and formed the product in a 92% yield over two steps. With the guanidine group now installed, the researchers moved to the final reactions of the synthesis. They carried out an oxidation using Collins reagent, which is a complex of chromium trioxide with pyridine. This was able to deprotect the primary hydroxyl group 
which allowed it to coordinate the chromium, which then abstracted a proton, oxidizing the group to an aldehyde. This underwent an intramolecular cyclization to form a hemiaminal with the guanidine group. In the final reaction of this synthesis, this was reacted with TFA to produce the target tetrodotoxin. Let's look at this step of the reaction in detail. The TFA carried out a global deprotection where it removed both acetonide protecting groups, the TMS protecting group, and the NBOC protecting group. In addition, this protonated the hydroxyl group of the hemiaminal, allowing it to be eliminated as water, forming a guanidinium species. This was in equilibrium of two conformations, an imine type nitrogen group with an axial ring junction, and an enamine type ring with an equatorial ring junction. It is this enamine form which is favoured due to the destabilising 1,3 diaxial interactions which occur in the axial form. It is this enamine which is protonated, forming an aluminium ion, which is electrophilic and is attacked by water, which provides the hydroxyl group in the correct configuration for tetrodotoxin. It is during this TFA promoted reaction that the ortho acid is also formed by the addition of the axial secondary hydroxyl group into the lactone ester, and thus completes the structure of tetrodotoxin. In addition to this product, they also observe the formation of fornine anhydrotetrodotoxin. This is formed by the intramolecular addition of the alpha hydroxyl group to the aminium intermediate, instead of the intermolecular reaction with water. These two compounds are known to be in equilibrium and can easily interconvert, and in this case, there was a 1 to 1.2 ratio observed between these two compounds, which had a total yield of 69%. So in summary, the authors managed to synthesize tetrodotoxin in just 22 steps, with a final yield of 0.4 mg, after purification by HPLC to isolate it from the also formed 49 and hydrotetrodotoxin. Highlights of this synthesis include the efficient Barnes-Fazella fragmentation, Henry reaction, and dehydration cascade, the nitrile oxide alkene cycloaddition, and the tandem ruthenium promoted cycloisomerization and ketohydroxylation reactions. Well, that's everything for this week's simplifying synthesis. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you have anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. In the next video, we will look at the biomimetic total synthesis of enterosin.